Hey, Kelly Stacks here, American Irrigator. I'm trying to make you a better irrigator. And today I'm gonna to show you a Y filter with a pressure regulator on it that we're gonna install on our one of our drip zones. Let me show you something. Now I've got this Y filter here, and this is a, this is actually a landscape products uh, type product, and I got it at our local, U, local Ewing store. And this is a one inch Y filter, and it's got a 30 PSI, it actually says it on here, 30 PSI uh, pressure re regulator. So everything out of, the bot out of the end of this is only gonna be 30 PSI. The reason I like to use these is because a lot of the drip these days, uh, and I say these days because I used to never have problems with drip blowing apart, but if you've got a high pressure situation, the drips and this fitting is only rated for a certain PSI. And so if you've got fittings on your drip that's blowing apart and uh, the fittings won't stay in there, it's, it's not because you, you did it wrong or if somebody else did it wrong or you got cheap stuff. It's actually because you've got too much pressure. And you know I see a lot of guys, they repair it and then they'll put hose clamps on there and everything else and then they still have problems. And it's not because, it's because you've got too much pressure so you need to take care of it right there at the valve, reduce your pressure and if it's drip is rated, for to operate in low pressure situations and actually that's what's best and so that's why when we put drip zones in every single drip zone that we put in is going to have some sort of Y filter with a pressure regulator in it uh, we use different brands I like that we use a lot of rainbird stuff with a quick check uh, window on those va those uh, filters or basket filter they're good this one here it's got a little clean out deal on top and so when you've got it in there you can blow all the stuff out of it that's how you clean the filter but it uh, this opens up I'll show you here this top comes off and you've got a screen filter in here it's a wire mesh back up so you can see it a little bit better and I can't remember off the top of my head what uh, for, I think it might be 200 mesh or something I can't remember exactly, but it's a good, It's there's not gonna be much at all go past this filter right here, which is good because you don't want anything clogging up your drip and your drip emitters. So I'm gonna put this back together here. It's got a little cap thing there. So every so often you'll wanna go open this up, take this out, wash it out, blow everything out. And that's what it's for. Keeping your drip good and clean. Now they, they make a lot of some different ones that are cheaper than this, but I like this one because it's got the pressure regular built straight in. So I've got one piece is all to put in. And so how do you put this in on your valve? Which side do you put it on? You want to put it on the downhill side. So I've got a valve here. This is a Rainbird PGA one inch valve and it's threaded. This end is threaded and this will thread directly onto this valve. I like to use Teflon. And I'll go around five times. One, two, three, four, five. And I go counterclockwise when you're putting that Teflon on. And then you want to be very careful to make sure you thread this on there right. You don't want to ever cross thread it. So go real gently at first, and then I'll thread it on there. And that you want it point up like this. So when you open the valve box, you're gonna see it up. And that's so you can get it cleaned out and everything. And so once it gets to that point, I think I can go all the way around one more time. And that's gonna be it. Because you don't want to get going around and it gets stuck right here. And then you have to loosen it back up, which you can do. But when it starts getting tight, go around again and have it facing up just like that. Now on this end, what we'll do is we'll use a, a one inch female adapter. That's what this is. It's threaded on the inside. I'll put my Teflon on the end of that. One. Go around five times. I used to go four times. I had a few of them leak and maybe because I did it wrong or something, but I started going five times. I have good luck with five times. Now this, get it hand tight first, 
And like I've said in a few other videos, I don't ever recommend that you use pliers to get these fittings tight, especially on a female adapter is real prone to cracking. But my grip isn't what it used to be, so I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna show you, but I don't recommend you ever doing this. And I'm gonna tighten it just, I mean, I didn't barely even tighten that. I, I think I might've gone a quarter turn more you've got to be very careful to not over tighten. And that's a lot of times what people do. When they put this kind of stuff together, they over tighten it, and that's what causes fittings to crack and it causes problems and leaks later on in the future. But there you go, there's a one inch Y strainer with a pressure regulator set up for a drip zone. So if you're gonna put some drip in, this is the type of setup you wanna do. You wanna do some sort of filtration system and you wanna regulate that pressure. This is an inline pressure regulator. There's other ways to do it. Uh, this is the way I like to do it when I'm putting it together. And this one, I ought to put a metal adapter on there and it's ready to go. Hope this helps you.